All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing some more stuff to the Tacoma. So, it's been a while since I've made a Tacoma video. But not many of you guys really watch them, but I still post them just because I like to help people out if they are questioning it, so on anything I do. But today, there's another radio install for the Tacoma. So, this radio, on the Tacoma is okay. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a nice radio. It looks good, it functions good, but not having the Apple CarPlay is the biggest thing for me. So this radio comes with a custom bezel as well because the screen is going to be larger. But yeah, as always, I do make some amazing radios. So. comes with everything you're going to need as well. as the radio. So I believe this is a 10 inch radio. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check on the website, but I think it's 10 inch. But let's hop in the car and actually see how this thing goes in. Should be pretty simple. All right, hopping in the car, bringing everything we're going to need. The only thing really you're going to need to take this apart is a 10 millimeter socket. So this radio is actually really easy to get to. You just pop off this whole bezel right here, which I'd start from this side here. They kind of give you like a little bit of grip behind it and just kind of give it a, a pretty good tug. And you can see where all the clips are at, but mainly if you start from here and then it'll pop out pretty much all the rest. Cause you kind of have, like I said, a little bit of a grip on here. And then the next thing you're going to do is there's going to be four 10 millimeter bolts. Here's one, two, three, four. So once you get those all done, the radio will simply just pull out. Depending on the radio that you have, um, it'll depend on how many plugs are in the back here. So this is the JBL unit with navigation and everything. Um, you don't have to unplug all of them because this harness right here has six plugs that just kind of piggyback from each other from the top and bottom unit. So I wouldn't worry about unplugging those, but just unplug all the ones surrounding it. And they all just have like little push tabs, so just kind of push on them and then pull out. These are the ones that I was talking about. There's going to be six of them, three and three, that you don't need to unplug because they stay with the radio. Um, all the rest you'll have to unplug so you can get the radio out. So, but this is free, so pretty simple so far. I mean, you've already done half the work already. So now we will pull out our iDoing radio and depending on what you want and what you don't want, it comes with a bunch of like, to me, unnecessary plugs because um, if you're running aftermarket speakers and stuff, this might be good, but I'm not. Um, this is for your antenna. We'll want to plug this one in. They have a bunch of other antennas as well for like 4G and Wi-Fi and stuff like that and GPS. If you want to add those to be able to use the factory nav on the unit. But if you're just going to use Apple CarPlay and everything, you don't really need it. Because it all relies on your phone. But... Then it has an external microphone if you want to use, uh, get a better microphone then. Because a lot of times on these iDoings, they have a mic right in the front here, which is okay. It works good, but if you want better clarity, it'll be better to route that somewhere closer to the driver's side. Then again, it comes with more accessory plugs if you're doing other things like external amp, cameras, and stuff like that. You may want to use this. Uh, here's a extra USB. More extra USBs. I'm not sure. I think this is for a a SIM card. Another extra USB. I don't know how many you really need. 
And then it comes with some screws to screw it onto that plate. And then it comes with some trim tools. So, so the only ones that I'm going to be plugging in for right now are going to be these. So I have the antenna. This is for, I think this is for your stock USB. This one is for, um, I believe this is for your backup camera. And then this is your canvas module right here. So, and they all have spots to plug in on the back of the radio. So on the back of the radio, here's your canvas module. You're going to plug this in right in there. And this is what reads pretty much all the car settings. And then you're going to have, these are pretty, they're all labeled pretty good too, to tell you where to put them. Um, but this one, make sure you put it on this side. So this one goes right there. Then you have the antenna one right here that just plugs right in the back. So then for this one, you're going to need these two plugs right here. So this one says car link. So I think if you want to use your factor USB as a car link, I think that's what this is for. Um, but you're going to plug the male and female USBs together. And then this has a purple plug that'll plug into the back of this radio. So now with just keeping everything simple, like I said, you can use those for a lot of other additional features if you really want to, but I'm just going to keep it simple. Um, so now that we got the antenna plugged in extra USB that plugs into this gray cable right here. And then one of these harnesses plugs in for the backup camera and then all the rest of your harnesses will plug in right here. So I'm going to plug everything in and test everything just to make sure everything works good first. And then after I do that, I'll mount everything to the actual frame itself and then we'll put everything in there. So just to verify everything works, I'm just going to plug everything in separately. And one thing too that I get asked a lot is do these support XM radio and everything like that? And they do not. So a lot of times your car will probably have an XM radio antenna and if it does, there's no plug-in for here, but if you want to use XM Radio or if you're a person who does and you use Apple CarPlay, you can just download the app or even on Android Auto, you can just download the apps. It's pretty simple to do it like that. So that's how I recommend everybody doing it if you use XM Radio. If you don't use it, then it's not even a big deal at all. Like I don't use XM Radio, so it's not a big deal. But now let's plug in the antenna for radio. And there's really no way of mismatching any of this stuff. So one plug will do one thing and that's it. And it already looks really good, just like that. So let me just turn on the car and just make sure everything's working good. All right, so it boots up really quick. It also recognizes when a door is open. So that's what's part of the canvas settings. Um, let's turn the AC off for now. Let's go verify the radio works. All right, well, radio is working. We'll connect to Bluetooth on the phone. We'll see. Make sure everything's connected. Pair your device. My device pops up. All right, this should be connected. If not too, it'll ask you for a password. I believe the password is zero, zero, zero. You can always figure that out in the settings. If you go to the Bluetooth settings, you will see a, a password, pairing password or whatever, if it asks you for it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why it does and does not. So, um, and once Bluetooth is activated on here, you can go and find CarPlay, which is usually under CarLink, and it'll pair itself. So CarPlay is working. Um, Everything's working good. The screen looks really nice, actually. It's it's big. It's nice. It looks clean in here. So um, Apple CarPlay is working. Uh, backup camera would be one too. So let's put it in reverse. Okay, my tailgate is down, and that's why it looks very funky. And my parking sensors are beeping at me. But so the backup camera works. Um, and so now we can go to like, there's lots of settings on here. Um, oh, steering wheel controls. Let's make sure. So volume is working.
skipping songs is working. I can hear it in the background. Um, so yeah, so steering wheel controls are working straight from here. You don't have to do anything special. This is actually, I mean, this is honestly a pretty good easy install for this car. Um, like I said, we still have to switch over this. Um, we have to put our new air, our air vents from here onto there. Um, and I think we might have to take these plastic tabs and put them on there too. But I'm, I can't think of any other settings on here that you would need. The radio works. Navigation, if you, like I said, if you have that GPS module, um, it'll probably pop up on here and give you a better service, but I didn't hook it up because I really don't use the GPS module. I use Apple CarPlay for everything. So yeah, then you should also be able to find your car settings in here. Everybody always asks me this too. So like you can see your, your average speed, your range, um, your history info, like all the other stuff you could find on the other one, you can find on here. And I mean, it to tells you your total trip miles, which is very, I didn't know that it did that. Current speed, I guess if you're driving, it'll tell you all your current speed, engine RPM, average speed, trip B, temperature outside. Uh, this is in Celsius. I'm not sure if you can change it. It shows 91.4 up there, but I'm not sure why it shows Celsius there. Uh, amplifier settings, so you still got all the things that you can change from your normal one shows you your tire sensors here if you have them all set up um, and then you have all the normal buttons to choose for your daytime running lights um, I don't know what all this other stuff is on here as well there's a lot of different things on here um, like heated and ventilated seats. I don't even know how that works. I don't think that's connected to this, but if your car did have that, it would probably be connected. Um, lock, unlock, feedback with lights, um, one key start, key electronic, unlock doors, two press unlock. You can change all this kind of stuff um, if you needed to, just like on the factory radio. So like I said, there's actually a lot more settings on here. Um, I don't know what this really does. Oh, it tells you what light is on. So I turn on my headlights, a bunch of other stuff comes on. So yeah, tells me when my hazards are on. So that's actually pretty cool. I didn't know that I had a feature like that, but. And it tells you if your doors are locked or unlocked and what door is just unlocked or locked so that's also a pretty cool feature to have but now let's go take a look since i know everything works i'm gonna unplug everything get the radio mounted to this frame that they supplied and then we'll mount it up and get everything looking like brand new that's what something i really love about the i doing radios is they blend everything with the dash perfectly and you would never really think it was an aftermarket radio because of some weird uh dash kit or something that they supply all right so here's uh the dash kit it's actually slightly different color they actually use gloss black instead of the matte black that they use on the other ones so which actually looks kind of nice honestly so let's start transferring over everything so we gotta like i said this doesn't have any of the air vents or anything on it so we'll have to put our air vents here and then we'll also have to screw the radio to here so that way it'll mount into this bezel. There's like some clips in here that we're gonna have to kind of spread open and pull this out um, because they're like snapped into place. So we'll have to see how these come out. Um, this is usually when you end up breaking some clips because they're a lot harder to take apart than you would want them to be. But I just got a flathead screwdriver and I'm gonna try to just spread it open a little bit and pull on it at the same time. Okay, that actually came out a lot easier than I thought. And it came out into two pieces, so. But there's a piece. We'll get the next one. So again, I'm just putting my screwdriver under here. And just kind of pulling on the...
Alright, so those actually came out quite a bit easier than I thought. Push them in the same spot and then push them in. Fitment is like perfect. So I'll grab the next one, line up the three, and that's all done. So air vents are in, works just like factory. So All right, so that was actually a lot simpler than I thought because when I actually did the Forerunner a while ago, that one had so many other little screws and stuff to worry about. This looks like they simplified it. So then this radio should slide in. Just like, wow, look at that. That actually looks really nice in there. I mean, it looks built in. So I will flip it over. They supply you this bag with, they actually give you a screwdriver too, which is nice. So they give you a little screwdriver and then they give you a bag of screws. Those screws are going to go into, there's four holes here that you're going to line up. And they screw in fairly easy. Just make sure you push up on the back of the radio so you can actually get the screw to line up with the hole. And you don't need to tighten these like super tight because you're just screwing them into plastic. Just enough to not make it rattle. So the last thing we got to do is transfer over all these little plastic clips onto all these little posts here. So we'll have to take these. I don't know what the easiest way would be to get these off. All right, so I just kind of set this up here. I didn't put those tabs on there yet. I just wanted to see what it looked like. And that looks so clean on here. So, I mean, this is what this car needed to come with from the beginning. I don't know why they did it, but this makes everything look like so streamlined, smooth looking, and it looks like it belongs in the car. Okay, well I got one, I kind of just flung off, so. All right, so I got all these off. Um, they weren't the easiest to get off, but they weren't the hardest either. I just used the flathead screwdriver um, and I just kind of went pried underneath it and then just kind of bent them over. Um, and it seemed to work, so. None of them broke on me. So now we can just push these over and they'll just snap right on. Oh, and it fits like a glove too. Snaps into place. All right, so let's... This thing looks amazing. I mean, it literally looks like it's like perfect on here, so. And there is also a screen protector on here too, so. Um, that's why I wasn't so careful when I was setting it down, but it does come with one. I will rip it off in just a second, but let's just make sure Apple CarPlay connects to my phone. And again, this is all wireless Apple CarPlay, so you don't have to worry about anything with no cables or anything. Let's check reverse. Reverse is working. Um, yeah, let's turn it on real quick. Let's turn the car all the way on. All right, yep, Apple CarPlay is working. Definitely a really nice upgrade. So let's take this off now. Oh yeah, the screen quality. I don't know how well you guys can see it on camera, but the screen quality is so crisp compared to so many other radios I've had. Like this is such a like high resolution radio um, and it's just such a nice radio. One thing though that I don't like about this car, if you have a like a newer Toyota that has say the stock navigation or anything like that, um, you lose your compass here as well as you lose the music, um, what kind of music is playing. Uh, so if you really care about that, being able to see it on here, then you might not like this, but I barely ever even use that option. Um, as well as, I have a compass on my thing, on my um, rear view camera, so it's not even like I needed a compass that bad. But yeah, you end up losing those functions because there's nothing that actually connects with the radio. I don't even think there's any aftermarket solution for that. But if there is, let me know down below because I would be curious to see if I could get that to work or not. But 
Yeah, anytime you use an aftermarket radio, it never communicates with this little screen here. So that is one thing. But yeah, I mean, everything's good. You got all your settings for your sound, everything like that. And like I said, you got your radio here. So that works. And steering wheel controls are working. The next is skipping through stations or whatever you have saved. So that's good. You can download music or put music on here if you want to. Um, like I said, it has Bluetooth as well. So if you want to just use Bluetooth to listen to music or make phone calls or whatever, you can. Um, it literally has a whole file system. It's like an Android tablet. So if you want to use any of this stuff, you can as well. Um, there's plenty of other apps that you can download on here. Um, because you can, you do have access to the Google Play Store, so you can do that. Um, I know some apps are not limit are limited. Like I know you can't download Netflix and stuff on there, but you can get YouTube. So YouTube is already on here. Uh, yeah, you have plenty of other things. So, but yeah, if you have any questions or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But I mean, so far, really, all I care about is making sure radio and CarPlay work, and that's all that matters, and my backup camera. So it's all plug and play with a backup camera. So that is a plus too. So everything else works perfect as well so all right but yeah that's gonna be a wrap for this video if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys next time